there's a lot of things that I know um, that uh, someone who would you, you would be looking at this on our website would find interesting uh, about you and and um, I, you know you obviously you know um, start off in other regions of the world and and at some point in your life becoming in you know in the medicine and science became important to you tell us a little bit about your inspiration there what what really drove you to get into medicine and science uh, thanks, Loni, first of all, for having me here, and I'm really happy to talk about some of the research and what we are planning to do at UPMC. Uh, so I grew up in India, and uh, to become a physician, I would always uh, give a credit to my uh, family, especially my mother, who always inspired me to become a doctor. And um, um, there is a lot of respect for this profession, and that's why during the childhood, I was always inspired and motivated to become a physician. And as I was growing up, I learned that um, medicine is a really a, a great field where you can actually impact a common man. So this is a perfect example um, of where you can actually have your knowledge and compassion for the common man and you can make a difference to uh, everyone's life. And that is what actually ended up uh, me becoming a physician and then retina specialist today. I hope that's why everybody gets to become a physician. I mean, that's, that's wonderful. And I know that you're very passionate about what you do. Um, you also are involved in research. That's become you know, an important aspect of what you do in the department and, and you're involved in lots of different things in the department. Um, if you could you know, quickly summarize for us the, the research you're doing so that we can understand a little bit about what what um, what is in store for the future for people who are dealing with some of these conditions. Yeah, and as you correctly uh, mentioned in my introduction that I moved to UPMC very recently, for, but for almost seven to eight years, I have been focused uh, on choroid. Uh, choroid is the layer which is present behind the retina. Uh, for many years, it was not uh, revealed, its importance was not revealed that much uh, because we did not have that good imaging. But in last couple of years, we have much more advanced imaging which we can do for our patients. And that has made uh, everyone aware about its importance. So my research is pretty much uh, in and around choroid where we are trying to establish uh, biomarkers where we are trying to apply these biomarkers in our clinical practice. I'm glad that in the last seven, eight years uh, with, at LV Prasad, uh, with, in collaboration with engineering groups, we could develop several uh, biomarkers which we are using now in uh, Im using imaging in our clinical practice. And now here at UPMC, I'm collaborating with uh, many basic scientists like Dr. Sinha, with uh, Dr. Ethan Rossi, where we are trying to put together uh, various ways of looking at choroid, establishing animal models, and we are trying to bring up uh, advanced imaging and trying to see that how we can actually diagnose these patients much earlier, because as just to make it much easy for everyone, choroid is one of the most important structure which is involved in one of the most common blinding disease here in the US that is age-related macular degeneration. And choroid is part of many other diseases like central serous chorioretinopathy, choroidal vasculopathy, where you know the actual origin of the disease starts somewhere in choroid, which we are still not aware of. So by using these advanced techniques, by animal models, we are going to establish the biomarkers, the, the early features, and then therapeutic options. That, that was a very good explanation because I, I think that, you know, if people haven't heard much about the choroid, and it really is, is because of the, the nature of, of essentially where it is in the eye, uh, it was never easy to image and, and therefore maybe never easy to understand its role in some of these conditions. Right. So the advanced imaging techniques have really made that possible. So when you say that you're, you're looking at biomarkers, you're looking at th things to, to really help identify or understand by looking at these images like exactly you know what 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 the the choroid is and how it can be impacted by various diseases yeah yeah exactly and and you know now i'm in dr sahil's group so we always think about how can we actually bring 
translational research in terms of clinic as a clinician i try to look at the images and try to see these images in a patient and then if we really compare with the animal models or take it to the advanced imaging labs how do we actually merge this information together and how can we actually apply this information to our patients That's so great. this is our goal that yeah this is our goal to bring these into a translational research and start applying to our patients in in diagnosis following up these cases picking up the best treatment options for them that's, that's fantastic amazing. yeah that, it, you know thank you jay because you know i know that you know um you know in in myself working with dr sal that's been the focus it's it's what we can get to the patient right really um and keeping our eye on what we're doing in science right making sure that we're not losing track of the the ultimate goal which is to ultimately help the patient absolutely and so you're getting towards you're applying that science towards something that ultimately patients can benefit from and and it's a long path oh um, yeah are, are you making you're making good progress hoping so yes going slowly but you know it's a it's a more difficult path <laughs> yeah so so you've already accomplished a lot i mean a lot of articles i i, I can't get over the number of, of publications you've had but what would you say that you're of all the things you've already done what are you most proud of um, in terms of your professional accomplishments um i w- i would start means i know that my area has been choroid and my future research is going to be in choroid but something which which i started uh, back in 2015 in india we started using a new drug which was not approved by fda to use it uh, for the eye conditions like avastin as you know avastin is used very often for amd so there is a drug called zivaflibercep which is approved for colorectal cancer uh but it's but it's ophthalmic form which is ilia is used for a wet amd so i started using zivaflibercep which is so called off label for the ophthalmic indications such as wet amd and other anti vegf injections we started that uh, back in 2015 and uh, we we did multiple studies establishing its safety clinical efficacy and we went on and with the help uh, because i was at lv prasad and they were very supportive for this work mm-hmm. and because of uh, our research we could actually publish multiple papers on that and because uh, of our research many countries and you'll be surprised that more than 20 countries are now using zivaflibercep wow. uh, with the support of uh, our research and uh, which is something which i am really proud of then uh, that uh, we are able to help our patients because you will be surprised that ilia cost $2000 <laughs> and zivaflibercep uh, is much cheaper almost as cheap as wow. avastin wow that's great that's yeah, and that's... now now we are trying to start using that uh, here in the us and we are trying to get the regulatory approvals and moving forward with that oh that's really 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 great mm-hmm. well you know so you were doing a lot of very good things even you know you're at the lv prasad which is a very prestigious i institute in india we 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 collaborate you know in many ways with the lv prasad so what you know attracted you to to come to Pittsburgh and and join this team here that Dr. Sal was building uh i would i would make the answer very simple there are two reasons in why we moved to pittsburgh one was the university of pittsburgh because as you know upmc university of pittsburgh have been really one of the most advanced um, in their field they have contributed a lot in medicine and engineering and a lot more uh, particularly in neurology uh, and radiology and ophthalmology so this was a very exciting to join the university of pittsburgh and the second reason i always say is dr sahil because dr sahil is a perfect role model for a clinician scientist who has done such a phenomenal translational research and um, it's really a pleasure to join his team and i'm really excited to uh, work with him in coming times well you know i i know he's always excited when he talks about the work that you're doing and and um and it it's always fun to learn more about it so it's great to to do that already today yeah so when you're looking at the future of what you know you hope to do both professionally but also what you feel maybe we can do here in pittsburgh in terms of really making an impact for people with vision loss what what do you see that really excites you 
Um, I would I would start with ophthalmology. I'm in ophthalmology for the last 17 years, and I think this is one of the most advanced field in medicine. I may be biased. And now if I talk about the retina, I have been a retina I have been a retina specialist for almost now more than 10 years. And I think it has transformed a lot. We means our uh, it has completely changed in the last decade. And I really think that the future for ophthalmology is very, very bright. And now when I am in UPMC and in Dr. Sahil's team, I can see that the work which uh, we are trying to do on optogenetics, the restorative therapies, the retinal implant, uh, I'm involved uh, with artificial, uh, artificial intelligence uh, research with UPMC Enterprises. The future looks very, very bright to me. And I think we can, uh, we can really move forward really fast. And um, the, the, the sing with the single uh, goal in mind of, uh, for helping the patients, and I think I'm very excited to be part of the team. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Jay. Um, I think people appreciate hearing this because, it, again, it, you know, you're a great guy and you're 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 want, doing wonderful work. And and um, and and certainly, we're all very very proud to have you uh, part of the, the the group that's doing the work here in Pittsburgh. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks a lot for having me. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.